In this video we're going to be looking at how to approximate the binomial distribution to the normal distribution. The conditions for this to happen is that n must be large and p must be close to 0.5. If p is close to 0.5 it will give a distribution very similar to the normal distribution. It will give a, a sort of bell curve. Now the normal distribution is given as the mean and the variance. The binomial distribution is given as n and the probability. So when we are converting a binomial to a normal, we have to calculate the mean and variance. So we have to write this as np, which is the mean, and the variance, which is np times 1 minus p. So that's how we're going to be calculating those values. We're now going to move on to looking at a question that uses this and we'll also be ensuring that we use the continuity correction that we explored in my previous video. So here's question one. It states 40% of cyclists will jump a certain set of red lights the next 100 cyclists at the set of red lights are observed what is the probability that less than 50 jump the lights okay so the first step here is to define our random variable and x is the number of cyclists that jump the red light we now need to say x is distribution so x has a binomial distribution where n is 100 and p is 0.4. We want to approximate this, so we're going to say that x is approximately the same as y, and we're going to define y as having a normal distribution, and we're going to do np to find the mean, so 100 times 0.4, which is 40, and the variance is going to be np, so these two multiplied together, times 1 minus p, which is 0 0.6. That will give us 24. So we've established that something with a binomial distribution of 100 and 0 0.4 is approximately the same as something with a normal distribution of a mean of 40 and a variance of 24. Now we need to calculate the probability. So what we're being asked is the probability that x is less than 50. Now we need to turn this discrete data into uh, continuous data. So we're going to say that is the same as the probability that y is less than, we need to do our continuity correction here, so these are the numbers that we're looking at. We want 49, but we don't want those two, so it's going to be less than 49.5. So this is where the continuity correction comes in. This is so important, this must go into all normal approximations for binomial and for uh, Poisson distribution as well. Just going to give myself a little bit more room. We now need to calculate the z-score. So the probability that z is less than 49.5 minus the mean which is 40 divided by the standard deviation which is the square root of the variance and that gives us the probability that Z is less than 1.94 now we need to find this value in the table I like to draw the normal distribution every time to make sure I'm doing the correct value from the table so we're looking for when z is less than 1.94 which is going to be this area so it's pretty straightforward we can read that straight off the table and that's going to be 0 0.9738 okay now we're going to move on to another example um, fairly similar so here's question 2 
65% of Year 9 students have their shirts untucked. On Monday, there were 150 Year 9 students in the playground. What is the probability that 90 or less had their shirts untucked? Okay, so again, the first step, as always with any problem, is to define the random variable. So we're going to say that x is the number of Year 9 students with untucked shirts. And the distribution of x, x has a binomial distribution where n is 150 and the probability is 0.65. Now, 0.65 is close enough to 0.5 and 150 is a large value for n. So we can say that x is approximately y where y has a normal distribution of 150 times 0.65 that's going to give us the mean which is 97.5 and the variance is going to be 34.125 now again we need to start calculating our probabilities so we're being asked to find the probability that 90 or less had their shirts untucked so probability that x is less than or equal to 90 we need to do our continuity correction here. So we're going to work out what number we need. 90 is included. So that's where the, the line's going to go. So we're finding that's the same as the probability that y is less than or equal to 90.5. Okay, now we need to calculate our z score. So that's the same as the probability that z is less than or equal to 90.5 minus 97.5 over the square root of the variance and that gives us the probability that z is less than or equal to minus 1.2 again I'm going to draw the normal curve just to see what values I'm reading from the table so there's 0 minus 1.2 is about there. We want less than that, so that's this value. Going to reflect it. So it's the equivalent of greater than 1.2. So we need to do 1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to 1.2 which is going to be 1 minus 0 0.8849, which gives us a final probability of 0 0.1151.